Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am the Innkeeper and today I'm going to be looking at the latest Steam branch build for the Alpha 12 of Stonehearth. It's looking pretty fantastic. This is a very big update, ladies and gentlemen. I say big, I mean it's revitalizing. For those that haven't really played Stonehearth for a little while, I recommend that if you do have it in your Steam library, go and check it out again. Because this is definitely a good one. At least in my opinion. There's a lot of new additions to the game. That may seem quite minuscule in comparison to previous updates. Well, <laughs> then again. New biome. New playable kingdom. New roof editor. That means bridge roofs, right? Probably not. But, <laughs> but I can dream. Surely I can dream. These are the patch notes. For those that are wondering, I'm going to be showing you them today. At least the contents of our 13 so far it is dev build 2717. I probably put that in the title. I'm not really too sure. And there's various new things of which, like I just said, new biomes, a new playable kingdom, which is a little addition. It's more like um, a faction or a tribe. They're generally the same. I think at the moment, really, it's just a show off and they might make a few, uh, well, very big differences between the kingdoms or factions, if you will, later on in the game. But at the moment, the new faction being, am I saying this right, Raya's children? Hopefully that's right. I'm not really too sure. Otherwise, I'm just going to say Ray's children, which I feel like is, it's just not really going to work out, to be honest with you. No more Ray, I'm just saying. But, but Raya's children, mostly just sort of pottery mechanic. It's, you start off with pottery instead of the... Well, there's a few little differences here and there. We'll get into it. But there you go. And then various other cool things which we'll be showing off today. Have got a nice little world right here. But before we go on to that, I'm just going to show off the little start menu. Before we do that, though, for some reason, the load game button is bugged out a bit right there. I'm not too sure what's going on. It's not button E. Do I click this? I don't know now. There's no buttons with it. Anyway, I'm wasting a lot of time. They now have a story introduction to you actually creating your new world. Now, I'm not sure how this is really going to work out once they or if they are going to add new factions because at the moment this is already taking up a lot of space. I imagine they'll come up with something. But this looks quite nice. It's not really necessary but they wanted to add their own aesthetic. It's not really aesthetic. A theme I suppose to suit what they're trying to go for. And I do think this works out very well the whole this is a story. We're reading from a story, but blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. It's pretty fantastic. These are the usual people that you play as. They haven't really changed them at all, other than, of course, giving the uh, new pottery class. And pretty much you can play everything on both characters or factions or kingdoms, if you will. I'm going to call them all of them. I'm not too sure why. But it's just really what they start off with that's a bit different. And I believe the uh, Raya's children right here are better in the desert than these guys, which are generally sort of more temperate when it comes to their biome location. There are still only two biomes, but the desert biome, it's a big one. It's pretty fantastic. We'll be doing the Rise Children right now, though, because, well, we want to take a look at them, don't we? There we go. The desert and then the temperate biome. They haven't changed anything with the temperate biome as I've seen. They've not really added anything. I know they have added waterfall effects, which I have looked at. And they look a little bit... <laughs> A little bit funky, but it's definitely a proof of concept. I'm looking forward to seeing that in the future. They don't last forever, though, which is a bit annoying. I mean, I know it wouldn't make sense, but I would just like to see a constant stream of pure beauty. But unfortunately, you won't be able to see that. You'll just see, like, some spitting out of the earth. It's a bit weird. We'll be going on to the desert, though. It is fairly difficult. I say fairly difficult. It's a little bit more difficult than it is to start in the temperate biome. But it's okay. I mean, getting food, you're going to be trading a lot, but we'll get into that in a second. And then you can go sort of peaceful normal game mode right here. Um, we're not really going to actually go into a proper game, and there's no real differences after this. Other than, of course, the addition of the basket of corn and the pumpkin basket before you actually embark into your world. Once again, just go with the trapper's knife. <laughs> there's no reason to go with the corn and that lot. You can buy one if you want. But that's the thing, you can only buy one. I've not, I can't see you buying multiple versions of corn. It's just 10 gold to buy a corn, 10 gold to buy a a, a basket, which is going to get eaten by one person. I'm, like, I'm pretty sure that's how it works anyway. Not bad stats, actually. Although I don't like the one right there on you, but oh well. 
And as you can see, they do look slightly different uh, with their clothing. And I think that hair design is slightly different as well, which is quite nice to see. Fitting the aesthetic of the tribe or faction. And then it's pretty much got all the other stuff right here. You know, you can get all this if you want. Just min-max. Try and get the best things. But really, the best thing is the knife. I'll go on the Abark menu. Just show off what the actual settlement location sort of uh, generation right here looks like. It's quite barren, as you can tell. It is a desert. I'm not sure what you were really expecting. So a few re-rolls right here just so you get a nice idea of it. The terrain seems to be quite sporadic in the way mountains form. And there's not as much flat land as I was, I wouldn't say hoping. I do like the fact that it's not really dull. You know, it's not just a flat surface desert. Maybe there were some dunes involved, I'm not too sure. That's pretty much what you're going to see. Just a barren wasteland, which is a good thing. But there's a lot of detail there that I really do appreciate. And then, of course, you see these little sort of oases right here. Is it oases? Oasis? I mean, it has to be oases to be multiple. Multiple. The multiple. <laughs> there we go. Fantastic. I will be going out of the screen, though. It doesn't actually let me go out of the screen, which is fantastic. So I guess we're going to embark and just load in to the save. I have f found that loading into the saves has been significantly quicker than before. I'm not too sure if that's just because my save is only about 30 minutes of gameplay. I have to imagine that probably helps out, but um, there you are. I guess we'll have a nice little look around first while the Fog of War isn't active. As you're going to see though, the rock formations right here do seem quite square from a distance, but up close you can do you do see these nice little details right here that definitely try and give off a nice rugged look to the, the texture of the surface right here. You can definitely see they've been sort of belittled by sandstorms over time, which is very nice to see, as well as these, I'm not sure what these trees are actually, um, acacia? I believe. I, I could be mistaken there. When you click on it, it tells you, but we're not really in a settlement. And I don't want the fog of war to pop up. Then you have all of these sort of uh, rocks right here that form the same way with the terrain that's nearing the rock surfaces right here being the dirt as well. Do slowly form up and it's a very nice look. Much more detailed, I would say, than previous builds of the game where it's just been a flat surface uh, to represent a mountain. Now they're actually do offer a nice little bit of detail to the elevation and inclines that slowly start to increase as you get to sort of some of these bigger rock surfaces right here. It's very nice to see as well as just sort of general areas like this that are just slightly elevated and they're just bits of land really. I would like it if maybe later on they were maybe a little more formed. At the moment it's still quite flat and rugged, I would say. I'm not sure if they're going to go for anything a little bit more smooth later on. I don't really know. It is quite nice, though, but you do see just so much of this flat surface right here, which I feel like could be fixed, but I'm not just sure if people really want to sort of go through the timber and stone situation, which is to just kerfuffle your way through little bits and bobs of terrain in order to make your kingdom the way you really want it to be. But let's be honest. You want to make your kingdom on a flat surface? Not very interesting, is it? I mean, you could start off right here. It's just me nitpicking at this point. But you do see these... Let's just actually make a base right here, because I can't remember the half the name of this stuff. Here we are. We've got some wild cactus right here, which I believe you can make, like, cactus plants and that kind of thing. We'll pause the game right now. And then these little boulders right here. These are tumbleweeds. You can get fibers from these, and these help with the tailor class, or the weaver, I believe. It's either one of them. I get them mixed up with timber and stone as well. Well, well, sometimes not as well. There are berry trees, but they're in the form of these pear cactuses. Now, I don't know, or cacti even. I'm not too sure what their regrowth time is. I found they haven't, they don't regrow. Um, I mean, I've been playing, I, the, the map I played on, I think there's about 30 to 45 minutes of gameplay. I'm not too sure when I actually harvested these cacti trees, when I realized they were a food source, or at least a natural food source. But... Or a world generated in food, food source. I'll get there one day. Give me a moment. But I haven't really found that they actually regrow. So maybe that's one of the downsides of the desert. Because it's got to be a big downside to the biomes. And the desert, as you would assume it to be, definitely is a sort of starvation based start, let's say. You're going to have a lot of trouble with food. And I don't think there's any way of making a carpenter. So you can't actually make a carpenter... Saw. Well, actually, I think you can. You've got to get to the blacksmith. But that's the problem. You've got to get to the blacksmith. But first, before you do that, you've got to get to the mason. But first, before you got to do that, you've got to get the potter. 
not the Harry kind. Get the Potter, do the pottery stuff, get to the Mason, and then the Blacksmith, and then you can make your sword, and then the Carpenter, then you can get a hoe. So it takes quite a long time in order to actually start making some reasonable farming, other than, of course, using your Hunter, which seems to suffice, to be honest with you. I'm not sure if they're going to nerf that later on. I have to imagine they will. It should be sort of quite the dwindling food source, I imagine. Or at least maybe after a little while once, they actually implement some sort of mechanic that involves animals scurrying away from the locations that you have been harvesting for a long time. Or at least setting traps in, and you maybe have to relocate, and eventually you sort of cull the entire, in, well, indigenous species of the population. It's not great, kind of grim to think about, to be honest with you. But there we are. Let's go over to the map, because I seem to be muttering on for quite a lot. I'm trying a different format. I was thinking to myself, should I just do sort of a weird real, well, real-time discussion of what I like about the update? Or should I do a nice sort of thing that I did in the last update video, which was out of my control, but still was a little bit more clean, where I just sort of, uh, sh well, recorded what I was doing and then put some uh, audio in post-processing to make it just sound a little bit clearer and... More interesting, I suppose. People probably want to get the information in very quickly. But these videos tend to be quite long because I do like to discuss all the little bits here and there. But as you can see, here's my little desert. I wouldn't call it a kingdom. Little village. Not even a village. It's not worthy of that, to be honest with you. I haven't really gone too far in, as I have said. Because there's not really any reason to go further than this. I mean, there's pretty much the only real difference that I've found anyway. The updates haven't really explained anything too late game that is... Completely different. We're on the way of constructing the third house. And these are all templates. We'll go on to that in a second that you probably just saw. This is a known bug, actually. Where if you create a house that is extended by one, which is part of the new roof mechanic, then this happens. <laughs> like Blocks just shoot up into the sky. I might spawn that N, because that might look kind of funny. Not N, in. But we are constructing our third house right here. And I think it's probably a good idea to go down the list. We've done biomes right now, though. And we are, you know, we'll go down the list. That feels unnatural. <laughs> it's always disorganized, these videos. I have a, I organize it. I've got notes and everything that should be said in a particular order. But I keep going into tangents. And then I say like a bit of one thing, a bit of that thing. And forget what I haven't said. <laughs> but there we go. The new biomes, I would say, look pretty fantastic. There's a lot more vegetation with this spawn point, actually. A lot more trees. And they tend to be spawned. On elevated positions. You don't really see too many on these flat surfaces. You've got like one right here. And then another one right there. But then most of them are just on these hills. I'm not sure if there's any real reason for that. Like any real life reason for it. It looks to me like it's just part of their algorithms. And they've decided that's what they want to do with it. Probably because it makes the flat surfaces look a lot more barren. Even though there is quite a lot of stuff going on right here. I mean you've got these tumbleweeds. These rocks. These wild cacti right here, the pear cactus as well. Pear cacti. It still looks quite busy. But the, the trees do add a little bit. But having too many of them would probably not make it look much like a desert. So I do like the, the fact that they have done that. It's quite nice. I'm not just sure how biomes are really going to work in the future. Whether it's going to be one big map and you can explore new biomes. Or if you just start on a desert biome. And it's forever going to be a desert biome. I'm not sure how I really feel about that. I think maybe... I mean it depends what they, they really say they're going to go for. From what I'm seeing right now. They would prefer it if you started off in just the one biome. And that would be your forever biome. Which sounds... It's a bit of a shame. But oh well. It's not really too bad I suppose. I don't think they really wanted you to play this game as... Sort of like um, a sand, well, sandbox, but sort of as a, an RPG, isometric, strategy Minecraft, that kind of thing. I'm not really too sure, but it would be quite nice. <laughs> I don't know. I like the idea of exploring and finding new terrain. Maybe if the biomes were just very large and it took a while to get to a new place. I'm not sure how they would do travel in that respect, but it's an interesting thing to think about. But there we are. For the uh, Rise guys, however, as I said in the start, they do start off with a Potter. And this is the uh, new class. Before we go into the new class, though, I want to show off an amazing system. This is quite fantastic. So this is the what they like to call the Herfling Therapist. And this is a very similar system that RimWorld has, being that you can organize your Herflings to be more specified in what they or what you would like them to do. 
So, as you can see right here, there's a nice list. This is also another way of seeing your citizens as well. So, it works in more ways than just one. Before, it was terrible. I might add, wow, your stats. I'm, I mean, I didn't really look at that before, but wow, that's pretty good. I'm glad I made you a mason. I usually just make people masons. That's another thing as well. The stat screen's right here. You've got your person right there as well. And their level is indicated below as well. So, instead of having to go all the way to this menu, uh, it's actually down here. But if you want to check their stats at the same time. You don't really have to do that anymore. You just got to cycle through them. And this also zooms you over to the citizen as well, which is also a nice little addition. So if we just uh, go back into the menu right here. So you can basically tell them what you would prefer them to do. I quite like to just take mine and build off of the skilled laborers. And some of them don't actually have the ability to mine or build or anything like that. I'm not too sure if that's due to their class or just due to their body. Maybe. I would like it if maybe in the future, if they have like one body, then they can't mine or something like that. If they if they have one mind, then maybe they can't be turned into a class. That would be quite interesting. A few big downsides, that kind of thing. But maybe as well, some of them can only be turned into the highest tier of class if they have a six of what is desired. That would also be quite interesting to see when it comes to their skill trees right here. Well, they're their attributes, I suppose. Something to add, I would say. You can also suspend entire actions, similar to what you can do on RimWorld. Just click this and no one will move items. Click this, no one's going to build, no one's going to mine if you click this one. You can also do multiple versions, or all of them, so that they all go idle. There's also an activity menu or a little bar on the side of them right here, just to let you know what they're doing. Very helpful, just to see what they're really doing. And then maybe if someone's mining, you don't want them to mine anymore. Tell them to stop mining, they'll go hauling instead, or whatever you've selected them to do. You can do multiple versions, select a few of them off, take this off. You can do pretty much whatever your heart desires. It's very fantastic, though. This definitely revitalizes the control that you have with your herflings to a, to a certain degree. I think they did a very good job in doing this rather than giving you, the player, direct control. And when I say direct control, I mean what Timber and Stone does, being that you can... Pretty much select your characters and tell them to go where you specifically want them to go. This is quite nice though. It gives it a little bit more... I would say it gives them a little bit more freedom. But really, it gives the game that different level of... I, I wouldn't say difficulty. I'm not too sure how to really explain it. But it definitely fits what they're trying to, to go for. Being that you're more of a guide than someone that's actually controlling them explicitly. You know, oh, go over here, form a group, that kind of thing. Although, they haven't really changed the party system that I'm aware of. But it's still quite nice. They may have fixed the bugs with the attacks. We are playing on peaceful mode. They, I don't think they've added any new enemies. But I think that's in, in the next update, Alpha 14, there will be a bunch of new enemies. I'm, I'm told, anyway, from what I've seen in the updates, there's uh, quite a few. And it looks pretty, pretty fantastic. But well, there we are. I'm talking about Alpha 13 now, though. But there we are. It's pretty good. I've sort of lost the plot right now. We we're talking about the, the 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 herfling therapist right there. And there, here's our potter. And maybe I should go into the potter right now. So disorganized. <laughs> I do apologize about that. I'm not amazingly t uh, awake right now. That's a great way of saying it, awake. It's why I really have only spent 30 to 45 minutes doing sort of the, the world. I'm on a timer. I'm on a timer if they... If I don't finish, they'll kill me. That kind of thing. <laughs> there we go. As you can see, the pottery class right here has a large number of items. Now, all of these buildings do require clay bricks that you will need to create right here. I currently have them on a maintenance of 20 bricks to be constantly constructed at all times, which is quite fantastic. It does make the maintenance tool right here a little bit more important than I believe it was previously because you now need to actually make an item that is required to build stuff with well rather than just having stone or wood that you gathered from the world naturally now you actually need to use those resources in order to create an item which will then be required so the maintenance tool now has a purpose in my opinion other than just sell selling items a lot of this stuff is just cosmetic that you can pretty much sell. There's no real use to it. These are lanterns, which I've never actually, I've not actually tried yet. Maybe I should place them down. Let's get the game running. Hopefully it doesn't bug out on me. The game hasn't really bugged out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wait a minute. I didn't plan for this. 
Game, don't do this to me. I don't want another Alpha 12. Uh, I say Alpha 12. Alpha 12 uh, Steam latest branch. For those who can't remember, that was a real mess for me. I can't place this down anymore now, though. So, there we go. I guess I'll just pause the game. Oh, okay. It's not actually... The UI's not working. Speaking of the UI, it is slightly different now for those that can see. It's a nice little mushroom house. <laughs> it does look a bit like a mushroom, actually. It doesn't really fit the aesthetic of these houses right here. For those that are wondering, these are the templates. They're not something that I've created. They're quite nice. If we go over to the uh, template screen right here, this is a house I did cry try to create, but I sort of stopped after this roof accident. I was going to do a lot more with the side right here, but, but there you go. It's quite interesting looking. Lots of space. I'm trying to come up with some new designs other than just this. But for now, I'll just stick with whatever we have right here. But there we go. If we go to our templates right here, you can probably see that the uh, the game is actually bugged out completely. So we'll go back. We'll go back on the save and continue onwards from there. Mm. Ah, there we go. A superb update video. Truly. Only the highest quality content. <laughs> here we go. All right. So if we just pause the game... Uh, you can see actually the uh, door opening looks a lot nicer now as well. Although I don't like the, the hinge right there. It doesn't seem to make much sense. But it does sort of open and close with a decent amount of force. It looks very satisfying. But if we go to our templates right here, you can see that they have given us three new templates. I do have a bunch right here from way back when. I still need to actually delete. Clay house for two. And then we have the clay dormitory, which I don't think I've actually started creating just yet. I have created the, this is the clay house for two, the, oh yeah, I'm, sure, I'm trying to make the clay dining room, I believe, looks like it, and then we've got the clay little house, or little clay house, and all of this has been created by the, the herflings, they haven't really had any trouble creating any of these items right now, we're in the middle of actually making this house, not gonna put the game on right now, as for some reason it perhaps doesn't like anything, also the Potter's Kiln right here, Kiln, is very nice looking. There's a nice sort of smoke stack effect as well. So I could see this working out very well with a few building designs, especially with uh, this kind of design right here. You could probably have it sticking out a little bit, maybe a little hole. It's actually um, just completely covered right here. Not going to be great. I was going to say it won't be great in the rain, but we are in a desert, so <laughs> it doesn't really matter so much. But I have to imagine having the sun burn on your face in the morning probably isn't a fantastic experience to have. I have to put some sort of sheet over it in the future. That would be pretty cool. That's like, that would be quite a nice effect. But we'll see what happens with that. It's quite nice, though. They're using the same fire effect that you saw with the braziers. With the, yeah, with the braziers that the uh, mason, I believe, can make. We have a look right here. I believe he can make them. There's no real updates when it comes to the other classes, although you, they can make the potter, Potter's Cutter, which is quite nice. It would be nice if they could give that to you as a starting item, although I do believe that the uh, two classes or two factions start off with different prioritization when it comes to their skill tree. We go over to the therapist right here. Go to show, not show workshop. Wrong button. Change jobs. You can see that we instead of starting off with the mason right here, we actually start off with the uh, Potter. And I believe this is the other way round. Since you don't actually start off with the cutter with the other faction, you pretty much start off with the mason and then you can go to the potter. So it's a slight difference. I don't believe there's anything else when it comes to the skill tree that is any different. But I have to imagine later on there will be slight differences here and there. Maybe there's a different farming option. I can't actually remember actually. The, I feel like there was a second option actually with the farming when it came to the other faction. Maybe I'll find out. I will probably show it in the video. Since I did do a little bit of recording of the other faction. With the temperate climate. Just to see if there's anything different. Which is pretty fantastic. Speaking of difference actually. I did talk about the waterfall earlier on. Uh, I'll be showing a clip right now actually. A nice little waterfall. And it... It looks quite nice. I do like the fact that it will fill up the, the hole below it. But it looks like it's spraying all over the place. And just spitting everywhere. It looks odd, to say the least. And after a little while, it will actually fill up the hole and start to pull over the land around it. Eventually, it gets to a point where it stops, though. So you're not going to have any real flooding going on. But I guess that's it's a very big puzzle. You don't really want to get your car through that. <laughs> or cut, really. 
no uh, wheel device is going to get through it. But there you go. That's uh, quite interesting. Back to the game, however. I'm just noticing the effect of the wall-mounted wall clay lamp right there. That looks very nice. It's especially, it looks very nice because it's very light. It's a very sort of uh, short light in comparison to what you would get. I say short light. It's not emitting a lot of light. It's very cozy, I would say. If we look on the inside, is there any on the inside? No, there isn't. This stuff is all uh, with the new template design, so I'm not sure what's really a part of it. What's this? Just clay bricks. Clay bricks hanging out the window. Wow. You guys are meant to pick this stuff up. We need a ladder right here. Get some ladders inside the buildings as well. They are still trying to create this building right here. I'm not sure what's a part of this. Um, what's in there? Half it. Oh, it's just a, yeah, it's a, literally a dining room. And then these are storage compartments right here, which are quite nice. We'll go over to the building in a second. You can actually remove buildings now that you don't like. If we click onto this, I think when we're in the building menu, there we go. We can actually select the entire building, pause it, or remove it completely. And these are all the items that we should get back, I believe, once we destroy the structure. We don't really want to do that, though. Um, I think we can actually do the same thing with this if we don't like it anymore. Yeah, if we don't want them to continue building this, we could probably just click that. We can also rename the building if we really want to, which we I think we could do that for a long time. I'm not really too sure. But it's quite good. Um, let's spawn this in, because <laughs> I think this looks quite interesting. Um, hopefully the game doesn't bug out completely. I'm not sure if these pylons at the top really go on forever. This is not actually working. Does it work anymore? Maybe it doesn't work anymore. Oh, no. Okay, it's just very slow. There we go. But, uh, yep, the infinite. Oh, wow, it really does go up for a while, doesn't it? We can zoom out pretty far because of these. I've never zoomed out this far before. <laughs> I don't think the game really intended for me to do this. We're, we're breaking. Oh, okay, here we are. Much higher than perhaps anticipating. Oh, that's not good. Daily update right there. We did get a new person. Our worth is quite high. Let's, uh, let's make our way down. I'm getting quite scared now. A little bit of vertigo happening right there. Unfortunately, that's not really the same color. <laughs> You still can't really tell when building. It's a little bit awkward. I'd like it if maybe they changed that after a little while. If we go into the blocks right here, it's... You just can't tell. I mean, I guess we're going to go for the whiter block. And maybe it's this one. I'm not too sure. If we just spawn this in as like a little mound. It's a little bit buggy, the uh, spawning system right here. It doesn't seem to work very well. But maybe it'll come. An exotic shop of rare wood arrives. So it's quite nice, actually. The... Interactions with shopkeepers are slightly different now. They will sell, sell you different items. This isn't really a great example, but I like the fact that it says exotic woods because really it's just a uh, wood from the tropical part of the map. So it's giving you all this stuff that you wouldn't be able to actually make, which is also quite nice. I do like the fact that the, uh, the, actually I think you can make it with the worker, with the carpenter. But like I said before, it takes a long time before you can actually get to the carpenter. Or at least if you're casual, if you're sort of just getting at it very slowly. I'm sure you can get the carpenter very quickly if you tried. But for the game's sake, we'll just say that it takes a long time. And it's quite nice that you can probably buy these, well, you can buy this these kind of items very quickly. And there's actually a good reason to, because, you know, a comfy bed. You can't make a comfy bed, I believe, until you get the, 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 the saw. So there's a good reason to do a lot of these things. And there we are, level 3 right there. The game paused, actually. Does it pause now whenever you get a level up? That would be quite interesting if that were to be the case. But there we are. So when it comes to the roofs with the new building designs, so let's just show off. There are some new uh, blocks that we can use. A minute ago, I just showed you that there were clay bricks right here. Various different colors right here. you got sort of a lighter gray looking block as well. And then sort of a more red Looking color, quite nice. This uh, sort of correlates the same way with our roofs as well. And they're the same with all of the uh, different types of walls that you can create. And they all look quite nice, especially this desert wall right here. I don't really use the wall block because it's quite weird looking in my opinion. It's not, I mean, it's not weird looking, but it's not really useful when it comes to making walls. So that's, that's quite interesting. Let's make ourselves a nice house though so we can check out these new roof designs. There's also a nice sort of overlap thing that they've made. Or, I say overlap, overhang, I believe. yeah, down here, overhang. And, well, this is the roof offset. So you can get a roof offset now. And this helps you to add more room to your first floor, let's say. So if you go down to zero, you can actually go minus, I didn't know that. Right, you can actually go into the building. So you can, you can make it quite low if you really want to, which is quite nice. 
Let's go to zero, though. So you can make your buildings look a lot smaller now as well, which is quite nice. Or a lot bigger. I'm not sure if there's any... Yeah, there's a max of eight blocks right there. And it will not be hovering in the, in the air. It will do this. There we go. So there's like a whole other floor that's added right there. I'm not sure if there is another floor. No, there isn't. But there's one very big room. It's quite interesting. If we want to just remove that, there we go. You can pretty much go as high as eight and as low as two. See what that looks like. There you go. It's a very small looking house. Quite cramped, but quite cozy at the same time. Just remove that right there. Yep, it did get removed. Good. Um, the max height doesn't seem to make much of a difference for the flat roof right here, which makes sense. You can also go for the different colors as well. We'll check out the uh, other roof designs, though. So I believe the, yeah, the stone roof right here, we've got your blue and your red right there, which is fantastic. You can also go for a proper peaked roof. I can't remember if you could do this. Well, I guess you can't do it because I'm not, uh, I'm not odd. So there's no middle peak right there, which is a little bit annoying. But oh well. So you can go uh, as high as you want. I wonder if we can go minus on max height. That'd be really weird, but no, we can't. There we go. So there's a nice flat roof right there. And obviously we can get the offset to as high as we really want it to. Would look quite interesting right there. It's actually quite a nice looking roof when it comes to the design that we're really going for right here. I would say we might want to stick with that in the future. And let's back up right there. For some reason, that's not gone away. Which is quite interesting. Little bit of a bug, but oh well. I guess we'll just remove that. Uh, no, if you could go away, please. <laughs> there we are. So we'll do uh, for 12 by 12. That's right there. And then have this go down... I think I've done this wrong anyway. Yeah, I have. Okay, it's meant to do 11 by 11. Okay, then. That's fine. We can't actually undo this. There's a lot of things still wrong when it comes to building. Undoing tool still needs a little bit more work. So if we just do this. I'm just trying to get a peaked roof. There we go. Proper peak right there. Does make a lot of difference, as you can see right there. Looks quite nice. Maybe if there's a chimney at some point, that would be quite a nice little addition to the decorative tools that you can add to the actual build right here and they can't seem to add this sort of light or the oil lamp that's because it's i guess it's not a wall mounted lamp which is the one right here yeah wall mounted clay lamp so it's not really going to work if we just have a look right here everything seems to be the same roofs you can make an overhang for so if we just remove this and actually get the overhang if we were just to put it in one direction on either side, you'll be able to see that it is overhanging by all the sides right here. And it does pop out by... It's not actually going out by one on that side. There we go. It looks a little bit weird. If we do this, then there you are. There's a nice, very, very nice looking overhang on all the sides of the structure. And I think this does help out quite significantly. When you want to be a little bit more decorative with your buildings, now we can make like a nice little block underneath this. Something like this looks quite nice. And then work around that. So it does help when it comes to decorating your roofs, make things look a little bit more interesting. If we only want it to be on one side, let's go to zero on all these sides. So you can have like a nice little overhang, maybe just here. There we go. So that's pretty cool looking. And then we get ourselves uh, just some bricks right here. and Maybe not bricks, maybe just some uh, wood right there and have it go underneath the actual roof. So it looks quite interesting. Do this. There we are. And then we can maybe make some sort of market stool like this. There we are. Um, building underneath things is still a bit of a problem. But there we are. That's like a little addition to the the structure. That's very simple to make. And quite quite nice. Actually, you want to add some little bits right here. And then you can add, add the... Uh, maybe the door can go right there. So there we go. Quite nice, really. Nice little addition. The roof hanging off right there. It's a cool little design. And that's the overhang tool for you, really. You can also add a window right here for a nice little bit of extra effect. The windows can now actually go on the borders of your walls as well. At least uh, touching the corners, which is quite nice to see. And you can have these windows that don't really have any detail to them whatsoever. Uh, you can go to the wooden ones as well if you want to use these longer ones. But you will need to get some wood first. And I believe you can't make it with the pottery class. Yep, still need to get the carpenter. So it's, you know, you are quite limited playing this faction more so than I would say playing the other faction since pottery isn't really as much of a required resource, I would say, when doing anything, really. 
But it is quite nice to have, especially when it comes to decorating. You will need them if you want to make some nicer looking houses, in my opinion. The roads look quite good as well, though there aren't really any detailed roads when it comes to the pottery. I'm trying to make my way over there, actually. There we go. If we look at our roads right here, there's nothing really too interesting. Whereas if you compare it to the brick, uh, to the stone and the wooden roads, I mean, this is quite an interesting looking road. Quite neat, but still more interesting than the sort of bold surface that you would find with the clay. I'm not sure if they're going to do anything else extra with that. Pretty much just the dark. I mean, it's just all the other colors, really, from the main palette right there. I'm not sure if they're going to add anything later on. Hopefully they do. I'm not sure what they would add. But maybe for the clay, they make the road look a little bit cracked. That will look quite nice. Just to sort of little cracks here and there, bits and bobs to make it look a lot more detailed. Or really just make it this, but more clay-like. Just darker, really. Just a red version of that would be quite nice, to be honest with you. It's pretty fantastic to see. Many other things. <laughs> uh. Uh, my apologies. <laughs> Many other things. What else? Pretty much we've looked at everything, I would say. I mean, there's small things here and there, like I believe items now drop off ladders. Um, to get clay, you mine dirt. You don't get stone, like you mine these little dirt patches right here. I thought maybe there's a greater chance of getting clay when you're mining near water. Doesn't seem to make much of a difference. You can collect, get clay from pretty much any dirt source on the map. So, you know, if you're worried about that, not really a thing. I would like it if maybe in the future you could only get clay from like close by. Or maybe not only a water source, but the, the chance of gathering clay from... Well, the chance of receiving clay is much higher when you're near a water source. Maybe that is a thing, but I've not really noticed too much of a difference, to be honest with you. I've been mining in here for the most part, just gathering materials, and this is just mostly dirt, and there's quite a lot of clay right here, and you don't need many bricks in order to construct a building. I would say that's still the problem that this game has, is it, building structures is a bit too easy. <laughs> like, this big thing right here only requires two wood and then ten clay bricks, I mean, these windows are kind of annoying, but there's just a lot of windows. You can not have that many windows if you don't want to. That's your decision. But it's just the amount of resources required. Clay bricks, 10. I would say this could easily be like 20 clay bricks, to be honest with you. But maybe that would start getting a little bit tedious just to get lots and lots and lots of clay bricks. But it would make it a lot more rewarding, to be honest with you. At least from my perspective, it's quite a subjective thought, but something to think about. Other than that... Um, they're aware of this as an issue, for those that are wondering. No need to report it. They're, they're fully aware that this happens. Um, I'm not too sure if I can actually show this off again. Maybe I can repl replicate it right now just because it would be kind of funny to see. We just do this. Much bigger building right now. I'm actually worried. I'm worried that it's going to bug out forever. All right, there we go. So we do this, but I believe we have to have an overhang on each side. No, okay. Sometimes it happens, I guess. Sometimes it doesn't. We'll leave it like that for now. Other than that, ladies and gentlemen, I think that's pretty much it. We've got the biomes, a new playable kingdom being the Raya's children right there. New building designs, including the roof editor improvements, which is pretty fantastic. And then just lots and lots of bug fixes, <laughs> which is... Quite nice. And then, of course, the redesign game design. The UI is the same on the other faction as well, for those that are wondering. It seems to be a bi-faction basis. I haven't actually tested the other faction on the desert, so I'm unaware if maybe it's actually just because of the desert. Same way, vice versa, if I haven't actually tried this faction with the temperate climate. So I'm just assuming that this is either just by faction and not by the actual biome that they're in, just because you'd assume that you would want to play these on the desert faction. But you're not really limited, which I do quite like. The, the, the fact that they do give you some choice there. You don't actually... Well, you don't get restricted when it comes to playing what faction you want to in a certain biome. It's quite nice. Uh. If that makes sense. Sorry, I'm getting short of breath. I mean, talking non-stop. I'm very excited, though. This is a fantastic update. It really has revitalized my love for playing Stonehearth once again, which is quite nice. Not saying it was really dwindling before, but it definitely has given me a nice, nice little push, I would say. I say push. Just, I'm very excited. Eh? I'm um, very excited to see where the game is really going to go in the future. The the uh, the dev team are doing a fantastic job. The art is once again looking amazing. The mechanics involved, including the wonderful Stonehearth therapist system, 
which isn't working right now because I guess the UI bugged out again. Bugs are bugs. It is the Steam, Steam latest Steam branch build, so you are going to see a lot of bugs. I said Steam twice there, and both in very strange ways. <laughs> I'm getting... I don't know why, but I'm starting to lose control right now. It's fantastic. Very ex that's all it is. Just the angst. Very excited to see the next update of Stone Earth Alpha 14, which will, I believe, be more mob focused, which I guess is going to be quite interesting to show you. I might have to make a different format for that. Hopefully, you have enjoyed this format. If you do want me to make a video that is just quicker, more detailed, then I might do it. But to be honest with you, I think having two videos that are basically the same thing is probably a little bit weird. So, <laughs> might not even bother, to be honest with you. Though. How long has this been? 40 minutes? Something ridiculous like that. Probably longer. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all very much for watching me. The Incubar review? Check out an overview, I suppose, of the latest Steam branch build of Stone of Alpha 13. If I've missed anything, I do apologize. Let me know, or let everyone know, really. In the comments below, I have put on the... What? I have attached the patch notes to the uh, description below. So if you want to get a proper in uh, deep, well, proper detailed look at those, you can do so. Just have a look at the description. It'd be fantastic. Until then, though, if you enjoyed yourselves and you feel updated and enthralled with joy in the latest build, then uh, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. All that good stuff. Follow me on Twitter for updates on my channel and Twitch for live streams. I've been the Innkeeper, and you've all been fantastic. And I'll see you all next time. Bye. <laughs> Didn't say bye there. Just screwed up.